Hi everyone and welcome back to the vlog. This is Susie from Threadquarters. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Today in the vlog I am chatting all about wax canvas, sewing with wax canvas and tips and tricks and I have 10 of my top 10 tips for working with wax canvas so if you'd like to hear more then keep watching. And I am very happy to say that today's vlog is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative people such as ourselves. Some of the class topics include um, fine art, crafts, photography, illustration, graphic design, the list goes on. The classes are geared towards all different levels, beginners, pros, dabblers, masters of their crafts and their arts. Um, but there's going to be a class there that will um, be suitable for your level. Also, I often find I quite enjoy watching high level classes just because I find them so inspiring. So even if you think you are a beginner, take that master class, take it and be inspired. And the wonderful thing is that the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box down below will get a free trial to the premium membership so you can explore your own creativity. I actually used one of the Skillshare classes to um, sew up this really gorgeous tote bag with some of my wax canvas and just plain canvas here and um, it's the class by Ellie Lum. It's called the Portsmouth Tote and it is a beginner friendly sewing class and it was just perfect. Now it's not exactly the same as the class because she uses leather straps and all wax canvas and I used a combination but I used the basic um, dimensions to get it so there's really interesting sewing classes on there. Ellie Lum also has the Oberlin tote which is a bit more advanced and that might be on my um, to, to make list very soon but as well as sewing classes on Skillshare they also have lots of other interesting classes and I'm interested in so much more than just sewing. I love creating and making in general. So the class introduction to DIY becoming a maker by Mark Frauenfelder really piqued my interest. He is the founder of Make Magazine and um, the class really does focus on the thinkings and way of life of being a maker and um, yeah it just really appealed to me and it was fascinating a really really interesting um, class if you're interested in just uh, making things with your hands it's just Bas the basic principles really and how to approach it. He talks about the how and why of making. He talks about the how and why of making and uses a five step flow chart to sort of break it down. Then the next chapter is um, sort of how to actually make something and you get to see the whole process that a maker would go through. And then actually talking about maker tools. So your physical materials, your components, tools and workspace that you would need to be a maker. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, then grab that um, link and you can go and watch it for in your free trial. So what is Wax Canvas? So Wax Canvas is a cotton cloth that has been infused with either a paraffin or beeswax based wax. And it adds durability and a certain level of water resistance to the fabric. I actually stock three colours of wax canvas um, that's made here in Northern Ireland for a well-known British coat maker. Um, and this is dead stock fabrics. There's not an awful lot left, um, but it is perfect for so many different um, things. For this video, I whipped up this lovely little tote bag that you can see. So I use the black wax canvas on the base there and also to make the straps. It makes really, really nice straps actually. I was very impressed with that. And then I just used an Ikea canvas for this part. As I said, I used the Portsmouth Tote um, class from Skillshare. If you are interested in making one for yourself, you can, again, grab that link down below and you can get access to the class in your free trial. Um, so you can make tote bags like that or also I made this really cute little um, uh, zip pouch here 
with a really fun lining on the inside that I had lying around in my stash. My son claimed this and he keeps his um, Hot Wheels cars in this. <laughs> Just decided he liked it, so that's fine. Um, but you know, coats and um, bigger bags, rucksacks or uh, backpacks or that sort of thing could be made out of wax canvas as well. Anyway, let's move on to my tips. So, the very first one I'm gonna say should possibly be obvious to you, but maybe not, and that is you shouldn't really iron um, your wax canvas. You're best to finger press the, um, the fabric instead because the wax will melt under the heat of the iron. So the thing with the wax on the fabric is that it actually does sort of help um, your creases stay in place when you finger press. You can use something um, nice and flat to really, really get that crease in if you want to. If you have a very, very heavy um, solid seam that you feel needs a decent press, get a pressing cloth and a clapper. Do a bit of steam on your iron and um, put your clapper on. Make sure you use that pressing cloth because otherwise you are going to ruin your iron. My pressing cloth is an old bandana. If you're wondering why you see a picture of a bandana on the screen, that is my pressing cloth. It's just 100% cotton cloth. That you can use a pressing cloth with anything as long as it's cotton or um, another good one is silk organza is um, an exceptional pressing cloth. My next tip is that you are better to use craft clips instead of pins. Pins may mark your fabric and leave holes that you maybe can't um, get rid of. Also, the, the wax canvas is qu ex quite thick, so pinning is actually quite difficult. So craft clips come to the rescue here and they are your best bet. If you do think you need this, this strength or the holding power of a pin then make sure you do it within your seam allowances. As wax canvas generally is a thicker heavier weight um, fabric than the likes of your normal cotton and, and lighter weight fabrics you need a larger needle so anything like a 90 or a hundred um, maybe you can see here jeans um, Needles are excellent for this. Jeans, canvas needles, that sort of weight of needle is perfect. I used a 90 to sew up my uh, tote bag that I was chatting about and the straps are four layers of fabric and it had no problem at all sewing through the four layers. Again, when you start to sew thicker fabrics and use a larger needle, it is always better to increase your stitch length. So move it up from, the standard generally is two and a half millimeters, so move it up to three, three and a half, that sort of, that sort of um, length instead, and that will just help a bit. So perhaps if you are making a bag with a bit of structure or maybe making a warm winter coat, um, you might be wanting to use some sort of interfacing. Now, if you have iron-on interfacing, like I mentioned before, don't be ironing that onto your waxed canvas. <laughs> instead, iron it onto the lining that you're gonna be using instead or use a sew-in interfacing instead. So sew-in interfacing, you don't fuse it to any fabric, you baste it um, to either your, your main fabric or your lining fabric. You baste it within the seam allowance and then it, that lining and interfacing then be, gets treated like one piece of fabric. So um, a lot of people, maybe when they get their um, wax canvas in the post it might have been folded so there'll be a couple of small creases of where it's been folded the rest of it might be in pristine beautiful condition with no creases on it whatsoever and yes that might look beautiful but that is not the nature of wax canvas wax canvas is comes into itself when it gets its creases in it and you can sort of see that initially when you first do that you think oh that's starting to look really messy but it softens over time and this um, pouch that I made 
like about a year ago has been well well loved and you can't really see any significant creases it's just a general worn look about it and that's the way that the wax canvas will eventually go so don't be worrying about the creases that's just part and parcel of your wax canvas but saying that, if there is a really significant crease that you really want to get rid of and you rather wasn't there, um, you can try and use a hairdryer to remove the crease. Now, I haven't done this myself, but this is one of the tips that I have heard about a lot. And just very carefully make sure you're always moving the heat. Don't just place it on one position for a long period of time because the wax is just going to melt off there so nice general heat and slowly slowly you might start to get rid of the creases a little bit wax canvas shouldn't be washed or dry cleaned because of the wax that's on it instead you are better to spot clean with a damp cloth sometimes wax canvas can attract a bit of dust and um, lint and things like that so again a little lint brush or um, even a damp cloth or just a little bit of sellotape wrapped around your um, hand and um, the sticky side outwards and use it to sort of pick up the the lint it's your best bet when you're working on your project you're going to have to be marking out your um, pattern markings and things like that you can use a chalk pencil just make sure that it's going to be in your project and not exposed because it would be quite hard to perhaps remove that mark what you can also do is just score directly onto your fabric with um, a blunt knitting needle or um, chopstick something like that would work perfectly well even just your nail you can make a small little mark with that as well and it'll stay um, do be aware that if you start using it and um, manipulating the fabric a lot, you're going to be getting creases in your fabric. So you might lose those marks that are just creased within your um, other creases that you've just made. So bear that in mind. If you think that might happen, then maybe the creasing method wouldn't work and you might be better with a chalk pencil or um, just like little snips or something like that within your seam allowance. And finally, just a little note that you can buy um, different types of wax canvas. So you can buy a dry wax canvas, which has a dry feeling to it, or a, a wet wax canvas, which has that waxy feeling to it. So the, the wax canvas that I stock is that wet wax canvas, and it's the sort that is generally used for the likes of um, your outdoor, uh, outdoor wear. Um, now, some people worry that that wax is going to rub off onto your clothes and things, but as I say, the more you handle and use your fabric, the more that that stickiness and the waxiness is going to um, fade and it, it does get a drier feel to it. Um, but the wax waterproof, it's not waterproof, water resistant aspect will remain. Also, if you um, feel that the wax has completely gone from your fabric, you can re-wax your wax canvas. Um, you can buy uh, tins or blocks of wax specifically for um, doing so. And I think you use um, a hairdryer as well while you're applying the wax. You just sort of rub it on or with a cloth. You get some of the wax on and then rub it onto your cloth and then the hairdryer as well will help manipulate and smooth over the wax onto your um, fabric. It's quite common practice to re-wax um, those waxed outdoor coats as well. That is something that just happens over time. The wax will eventually come off and um, those uh, manufacturers and companies always say to rewax, I think a lot of them like do a rewaxing service for you. So, um, but if you've made it yourself, you can rewax it yourself as well. Generally, you don't have to worry about wax clogging up your machine. I know that people might be concerned of if you're making something small like this, or maybe just a wee tote bag like this. It's it doesn't clog up your machine. If you're making something more substantial like a large um, coat, then perhaps there might be a bit of buildup. So you're going to want to clean off your feed dogs. Um, probably you'll need a new 
needle anyway. I was going to say clean your needle, but you're going to need a new needle anyway. Clean the bottom of your foot. You don't need a specific um, machine foot for sewing with wax canvas either. You can just use your regular one. It works totally fine. Um, but yeah, the base of it might have a small, small layer. So you can use a bit of rubbing alcohol very, very gently on that. Um, when you take it off your machine, just clean the bottom off it as well and the throat plate, etc. So just that area around there. And um, should be good to go. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy tips and tricks for sewing, then please do subscribe and um, I will catch you all again very soon. Cheerio. Also, did you see I have someone here with me? She's been asleep the whole time. Let's see. <laughs>